motherboards. Now this chapter will cover the different features and types of motherboards commonly available to you in the market. You also learn about the motherboard BIOS and how to navigate through the settings that are available within a standard BIOS. We'll then talk about proper maintenance and motherboard installation or replacement procedures. So the following objectives are what we're going to cover over the next hour. After reading the chapter and completing all the exercises for this chapter, you will then learn about the different types and features of various motherboards. You learn how to use the setup BIOS, how to get to the BIOS, how to use physical jumpers to configure a motherboard, which you generally don't, you probably won't have to mess with. Um, you also learn how to maintain a motherboard. And lastly, how to select, install, and replace a motherboard if necessary. And we talked about the reasons why you would have to replace a motherboard or install one uh, a few chapters ago. So let's go ahead and jump into the chapter now. Now, of all the parts of your computer, the motherboard is definitely the most complicated computer component. This is one of the first times to consider when building a computer for yourself if you choose to do this. And if you choose to build one, uh, consider the following when purchasing a motherboard. What type of form factor are you using? What about the processor socket and the chipset you want to use? The buses and the number of bus slots that are available? And other types of connectors and slots and ports that are available that you want to be able to use on your computer? You know, whether it's video or, you know, do you have enough, are you going to have enough USB ports? Think about all of this prior to purchasing a motherboard when you want to build your own computer. Remember, your motherboard connects everything together. Now, the motherboard, determine the motherboard size, the features, if it's, if it's compatible with the power supply you want to use, the case that you want to use, what processors you want to use. All this information has come into effect. Then there's several different form factors, several different types of motherboards. The most popular, of course, is the ATX. This is the most common. There's also micro ATX, mini ATX, ITX, BTX, all kinds that are out there. Uh, the mini ITX is the smaller, is smaller than the micro ATX. It's also known as ITX. Here's an example of a mini ITX motherboard that I just talked about. So do some research to get a good look at the different types of motherboards. Go to like Newegg.com or some sites where you can purchase motherboards or just do some general searches for different motherboards. There's so many different types and you need to know some of the different information about the motherboard such as you know what size is a form factor, you know, do a little description, you know, if one is this one smaller than this one? Kind of know those dimensions. And you can see here we have a lot of different form factors available to us. You got the specifications here, a little bit of information about them. Definitely go over this information, get a good feel of it, because you will be asked questions about the different form factors here. And you know, definitely know that a, a micro BTX, you know, that, that is larger than a Pico BTX, but yet it is smaller than a full size. ATX. You may even want to become familiar with some of the brands, you know, like an Intel DH67GD is a micro ATX, whereas an Intel DX58SO is definitely not the ATX or the micro ATX, but it is an ATX board. So note, as you kind of look at them, get a feel of what's a micro ATX, what's a mini ATX, what's an ATX, and so on and so forth. Now another important feature of a motherboard is the processor socket. Now the processor socket and the chipset determine the processor a board can fully support. A socket for a personal computer is designed to hold either an Intel or an AMD processor. As some of the older ones were installed on the motherboard in a long narrow slot, but uh, those processors today we find use sockets. Uh, make sure you look at the list for the different types of sockets because this is something you will definitely see on your 801 exam. You know, know that Intel makes the Itanium processors um, and we just know those as the i3, i5, i7 and so on and so forth and the Xeon processors. And these are primarily designed for server use. 
you know, definitely look at figures that describe the different Intel socket names and get a get a feeling for their processor family, you know, the description and uh, how many pins are in the sockets, uh, what type of, you know, socket it is, the names of them, some of them are interchangeable such as an LGA775 or you could call that a socket T, same way with the, its predecessor the LGA771 which could also be called a socket 3. Uh, get a good feeling of these and um, especially as you know the more current ones you're probably going to work with are going to have the Intellium processors so you're going to want to know all about the sockets that can contain those type of processor chips. You know, the processor family of the Core 2 Duos were out for a long time. You'll probably still run into uh, computers with the Core 2 Duo processors on them for the next several years because they are a very solid processor. I said no that, you know, you could run into, you know, two or three different Intel sockets for these processors. Now, sockets and processors use different methods to make contacts between them. And, you know, here's some of those that you want to make sure that you're fully aware of. The pin grid array, or PGA socket, has holes aligned in uniform rows around the socket to receive the pins on the bottom of the processor. Then we have the LAND grid array, or the LGA. Now this uses pads rather than pins. Examples of these you definitely want to know about are the LGA775 and the LGA1366. And when we were talking about the PGA sockets, uh, a lot of those, those delicate pins on the processors were easily bent as the processors were installed in the socket. So definitely know the difference between the pin grid array and the LAND grid array here. You know where your levers are at, such as with the uh, the land grid array, you know the LGA775 socket, for example, that has 775 pins, and the lever, the socket lever, and the top open. Uh, look at how those open, so that you know how to use you know those type of sockets. Always look for those socket levers used to open and close your socket. The other socket type I want to talk about is the flip chip land grid array or FCL GA socket. Um, in this processor package the chip is flipped over so that the top of the chip is on the bottom and makes contact with the socket. Uh, one to know here is the LGA 1155 socket has a flip chip version and we call this the, you guessed it, FCL GA 1155 socket. Another type that we have is the staggered pin grid array, the SPGA socket. And this one, and this socket has pins that are staggered over the socket to squeeze more pins into a much smaller space. And then lastly, we have the ball grid array or BGA connection. It's not really a socket, uh, the processor is soldered to the motherboard. So whenever you buy the motherboard, you're buying this as a unit that includes the processor. And you'll see this sometimes in lower end computers or even home theater where they're using like a mini ITX motherboard. I want to talk about a current term you're, you're going to hear, and that's called a ZIF socket. This is where all of our current processors use this type of socket. This is a zero insertion force. You slide the lever that lifts the processor up and out of the socket. That way you're not putting any type of force on this to do any type of damage. Let's take a look at the AMD side for our sockets and our processors. And you see we have a list here of all the different types of AMD sockets, uh, what type of the AMD processor family they're part of. Same thing with the Intel side. Just need to be aware of these, get a good feel of you know their descriptions and which processor family these sockets are used for. Generally, the AMD processors are going to be a little bit cheaper, and so your like game enthusiasts and people who really love to build computers may go this in just for a little bit more cost effectiveness or a little savings that they can use on the processor. They might take that extra money to then put on other parts of their of their computer.